Authorised Professional Operator Assessment, Module 3, Quarantine and Priority Pests. Quarantine Pests. What is a Union Quarantine Pest? A quarantine pest is a pest which is absent from the EU or present but under control. A quarantine pest is a pest which has caused or has the potential to cause serious damage to plants and plant products. The establishment of quarantine pest in the EU would have unacceptable economic, environmental and social impacts. Quarantine pests are regulated and plants and plant material must be free from these pests. Tomato brown rugose fruit virus. Tomato brown rugose fruit virus is an extremely resistant virus that affects up to 100% of tomato, pepper and chilli plants. This virus can survive for long periods in infected debris, in soil or on contaminated surfaces. Tomato brown rugose fruit virus can be transmitted within seeds by human handling on tomatoes and potentially bumblebees. Tomato brown rugose fruit virus has been discovered in EU member states. Tomato brown rugose fruit virus has a wide range of symptoms which may be mild. They often appear in the top young shoots of plants. On the leaves of plants, wrinkles or bubbles may appear. Chlorotic and mosaic patterns can develop and some leaves may have necrotic spots. On the fruits, this virus can cause yellow or brown spots or deformities of the fruits. There are currently no commercial tomato varieties which are tolerant to tomato brown rugose fruit virus. Best practice to prevent the introduction and spread of tomato brown rugose fruit virus includes the use of disposable gloves and disinfection of hands. The use of dedicated clothing and work equipment for sensitive plants. The sterilization of equipment before and after use. The training of staff in disease recognition and recognition of symptoms. Ensure phytosanitary certificates or plant passports guarantee virus free status of the plants. Globodera pallida. Globodera pallida is more commonly known as the potato cyst nematode. PCN or eelworm. These microscopic parasites thrive in temperate regions. PCN can be found in soil particles or in the roots, stolons or tubers of host plants. The PCN species Globodera pallida is more difficult to manage than other PCN species such as Globodera rostochinensis as there is currently less resistance to Globodera pallida in most plant cultivars. Globodera pallida eggs can remain dormant within the soil for up to 25 years. The main hosts of Globodera pallida are restricted to the Solanaceae family, which include potatoes, tomatoes and aubergines. In Ireland, the main host plant of concern is field potatoes. The symptoms of Globodera pallida are not specific and crops may display a variety of symptoms. These symptoms can include poor patches of growth within the crop. Plants may display chlorosis or wilting with poor top growth and some crops may have yield loss and smaller tubers. To be confident of the presence of Globodera pallida Cysts must be observed directly on the roots of host plants. 
the presence of global dera pleda can also be confirmed by the analysis of soil samples. Global dera pleda can be spread in a variety of methods. These methods include dispersal with the movement of seed potato and or soil, through the movement of contaminated machinery, farming implements and footwear, dispersal via wind during dust storms, and the movement of animals or the passage of PCN through the gut of animals without damage. In Ireland and other EU member states, it is required that soil sampling is carried out on land intending to grow certified seed potatoes or other bulbous plants to detect or confirm the presence of Globodera pallida. Best practice to prevent the introduction and spread of Globodera pallida includes the sanitation of farm machinery, tools and footwear. The planting of certified seed material. The practice of long crop rotations of five or more years. The use of resistant varieties and cultivars. The use and application of biofumigants. The collection of wastewater to minimise the spread of PCN to clean land. And the minimising of soil movement and ensuring that commercial vehicles are free of soil. Priority pests. Priority pests are quarantine pests that have been identified as top priorities for EU member states. There is a total of 20 priority pests on the European Commission's list. Priority pests have extra requirements for the National Plant Protection Organisation of Member States. These requirements include annual surveys, contingency plans, simulation exercises, action plans and public awareness campaigns in relation to the pests. Priority pests of concern to Ireland include Agrilis planipennis, the emerald ash borer, Anoplophora chinensis, the citrus longhorn beetle, Anoplophora glabripennis, the Asian longhorn beetle, Aromia bungii, the red-necked longhorn beetle, Bursophilenchus xylophilus, the pinewood nematode, Papilia japonica, the Japanese beetle, Spodoptera frugiperda, the fall armyworm, and Xylella fastidiosa, leaf scorch disease. Xylella fastidiosa. What is Xylella fastidiosa? Xylella fastidiosa is a pathogenic bacteria that infects and colonizes the xylem of host plants. There are three or more known subspecies of Xylella fastidiosa, including Xylella fastidiosa fastidiosa, Xylella fastidiosa multiplex, and Xylella fastidiosa pauca. Xylella fastidiosa has an expansive range of host plants, but the main hosts include grapevines, olives, almonds, citrus, oleander, coffee, and Quercus species. Xylella fastidiosa is transmitted or spread from plant to plant through xylem sap-sucking insects which belong to the Hemiptera order such as spittlebugs. Xylella fastidiosa does not survive in seed. Symptoms of Xylella fastidiosa can vary between host plant species. The main indicators or symptoms of Xylella fastidiosa include leaf scorching or browning, 
the wilting of foliage, dieback from the leaves and the death of a host plant. Best practice to prevent the introduction and spread of Xylella fastidiosa includes using plants from known and reputable suppliers Seek guarantees from your supplier in relation to the health status of the plants. Know where the plants have originated from and make sure that all plants or plant material purchased has valid plant passports. Aromia bungiae Aromia bungiae is commonly referred to as the red-necked longicorn or peach borer. The larvae of Aromia bungiae develop in the wood of prunus species, causing economic damage to apricot, cherry, peach, plum and ornamental species. Aromia bungiae was first detected in the UK in 2008 with further outbreaks in Germany and Italy. Aromia bungiae is often introduced through wood packaging material and the trade of nursery plants. Aromia bungiae, how do I recognize it? The adults of Aromia bungiae have elongated shiny blue black bodies except for the pronotum, which is distinctively bright red. The adults have stout spine-like lateral tubercles and are generally 22 to 38 millimetres in length. The adults emerge from June to August. The larvae penetrate under the bark of trees or woody shrubs and the life cycle of Aromia bungiae from egg to adult ranges from two to four years. Aromia bungiae detection. Aromia bungiae can be detected in the following methods. Piles of extruded larval frass at the base of an infested tree. Oval emergence holes approximately 12 millimetres in size. Once a larval frass or emergence hole has been identified, destructive sampling can be carried out by removing the bark of the tree to determine if young larvae are present. Cutting through the trunk will reveal mature larvae. Traps can be used to detect adults in the summertime. Best practice to prevent the introduction and spread of Aromia bungiae includes ensuring that all wood packaging material has the ISPM 15 mark. The use of traps to monitor or detect the presence of Aromia bungiae. The use of reputable suppliers. Seek guarantees from your supplier in relation to the health status of the plants. Know where the plants have originated from. And if you suspect the presence of Aromia bungiae, contact the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. Papilia japonica. Papilia japonica is known as the Japanese beetle. Papilia japonica has an extensive list of host plants ranging from native Irish trees such as oak to naturalised trees like maple and beech to soft fruit crops such as rubus or strawberry and to vegetable and nursery stock. The most common symptom of Papilia japonica is skeletonized foliage. The adults of Papilia japonica can be found from mid-May to mid-July. 
eradication of Papilia japonica is difficult and in the wider environment is next to impossible. Papilia japonica are usually transmitted through infective plants, plant material, soil or transport vehicles. Best practice to prevent the introduction and spread of Papilia japonica includes the use of resistant or less susceptible species and cultivars. The use of traps to monitor or detect the presence of Papilia japonica. The use of reputable suppliers. Seek guarantees from your supplier in relation to the health status of the plants. Know the origin of the plants plant material and or soil and if you suspect the presence of Papilia japonica contact the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. Anoplophora chinensis Anoplophora chinensis is more commonly known as the citrus longhorn beetle. The citrus longhorn beetle is a polyphagous pest that attacks plants from more than 20 genera of trees. These include Acer, Betula, Malus and Salix. The symptoms of Anaflavora chinensis are conspicuous with significant frass and holes at the base of any infected tree. Trees infected by this pest are killed slowly over a number of years as the population builds. The introduction of Anaplophora chinensis usually occurs through plants, wood, wood packaging material and hitchhiking on vehicles. The detection of this pest would result in the establishment of buffer zones, surveys, a ban on the movement of host plants and the eradication of all nearby host plants. Best practice to prevent the introduction and spread of Anaplophora chinensis includes the use of reputable suppliers. Seek guarantees from your supplier in relation to the health status of the plants. Know where the plants or trees have been sourced, originated from and have been grown. Ensure that all wood packaging material has the mark ISPM 15. Make sure that all plants or plant material have valid plant passports. If you suspect the presence of Anoplophora chinensis, contact the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. International Year of Plant Health The United Nations General Assembly has declared 2020 as the International Year of Plant Health or IYPH. This year has been created to address the issues that threaten plant health such as climate change, human activity, international travel and international trade. All of these issues impact on biodiversity create new niches for pests and increase the spread of pests and diseases around the world. International Year of Plant Health is an opportunity to raise global awareness on how plant health can end hunger, reduce poverty, protect the environment and boost economic development. Key facts in relation to the International Year of Plant Health The annual value of trade in agricultural products has almost trebled in the last decade. It has reached $1.7 trillion. Agricultural production must rise by approximately 60% by 2050 to feed a larger global population. Plant pests are responsible for losses of up to 40% of all food crops globally. Climate change threatens crop yields with more pests appearing earlier and spreading into new territories. 
Beneficial insects are vital for plant health, pollination, pest control, soil health, nutrient recycling, yet insect abundance has fallen by 80% in the last 25 to 30 years. How to support the International Year of Plant Health and Plant Health in general. Prevent the spread of pests by using only certified pest-free seeds and seedlings. Regularly monitor and report the occurrence of pests on farms and nurseries. Adopt environmentally friendly pest management practices, including those based on biological approaches that do not kill pollinators and beneficial insects and organisms. Employ modern digital technology, mobile apps and software to assess information on prevention and management of plant pests and diseases. Make trading and transporting plants and plant products safer by complying with international plant health standards and legislation, including phytosanitary certificates and plant passports. For further information in relation to this presentation, please contact the Horticulture and Plant Health Division of the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. The address is Backwestern Administration Building, Backwestern Campus, Selbridge, County Kildare, W23X3PH, telephone 015058885 or email plantandpests at agriculture.gov.ie